Flags are half-masted across Russia, and mourners are paying tribute to the victims of the country's deadliest attack in two decades. Gunmen had stormed a rock concert in a suburb of the capital, Moscow, shooting automatic weapons and setting the building on fire. At least 130 people were killed, but with over 100 injured in the hospital, officials expect the death toll to rise. President Vladimir Putin said all four gunmen were arrested. He suggested that Ukraine may be linked to the attack, he vehemently denying that. Meanwhile, the Islamic State group has claimed responsibility. For more, let's speak to Daniel Hawkins, standing by in Moscow. Hello to you, uh, Daniel. First of all, what is the mood like in the capital? Well, it's very clear this is no ordinary day uh, in Moscow. Any given Sunday, people will be out and about attending all sorts of events, cultural uh, events, sports games, uh, social gatherings. That's not happened today. The mood is very overcast. Uh, all events have been called off. Uh, even the television and radio have changed their broadcast patterns. There's no entertainment programs on today. Um, flags on government buildings are at half mast. Flags on uh, certain foreign embassies are also at half mast, notably uh, the US and the UK embassies as a sign of solidarity and respect uh, to what happened. Um, but there's also real coming together of people. Hundreds, probably thousands, have been out to put uh, flowers, candles, um, uh, teddy bears as a tribute to the kids who died in this attack in Crocus City Hall or outside Crocus City Hall, um, in multiple other cities in Russia as well, going to the central squares to lay flowers and candles. Um, train companies, plane companies, airline companies um, have been offering the victims, families and friends free transportation to and from Moscow, those who've been affected. Banks have been uh, saying they're going to sign off uh, credits and debts to those who were affected by this attack. Um, restaurants have been delivering food uh, to hospitals, which have been working um, incessantly uh, to treat those injured, to uh, take in the massive amount of blood donors who've come forward to donate blood. So aside from this very much downcast, uh, solemn mood in Moscow, uh, there is also a feeling of unity uh, and of uh, commemoration to give a tribute as to what happened two days ago and the worst terrorist attack in Moscow uh, in decades. And the investigation continuing, uh, some finger pointing there, Daniel. Uh, what evidence is there as to who was behind the attack? Well, of course, it is very early days still in this investigation, and the Kremlin has stopped short of perhaps directly accusing Ukraine of 100% being behind this attack. But certainly that's been very heavily implied, if you like, both in Russian media, by Russian lawmakers, certain Russian officials. Um, the evidence they say is that these attackers, after carrying out this assault, fled towards the Ukrainian border to try to escape Russia. Um, security services have said they had contacts on the other side of the border who would help them get across if needed, though we've seen no evidence publicly at least presented of that happening. Um, certain analysts have also pointed to the behaviour of these attackers, saying that normally uh, when ISIS terrorists uh, strike, um, they wear suicide vests, they expect to die or be killed in this attack. In this case, from interrogation videos released by security services, um, these uh, terrorists who were arrested would look terrified, they were shaking. Um, they say they carried this act out for money. Um, we don't know um, if these statements, you know, were made under heavy duress. Uh, you know, these are unofficial videos leaked to the media. Um, but certainly analysts have pointed to the fact that the people behind this didn't seem to be acting like the typical ISIS terrorists in attacks we've seen before. Having said that, of course, um, Ukraine, as you say, has vehemently denied any involvement in this. ISIS has claimed responsibility, or rather a branch of ISIS has claimed responsibility. Um, though having said that, of course, they have claimed responsibility for attacks before, in which case, in which they've had no involvement. So very early days still in this investigation. The implication from Russia is some sort of involvement from Ukraine, but we are yet to see some public strong evidence directly linking um, Kiev to this attack as implicated by officials and the media in Russia. All right, Daniel. Thank you very much, Daniel. Daniel Hawkins reporting from Moscow.